tip, let go of the pressure. Let go of the pressure to have that perfect holiday, to make it like it was before your loved one died. It's not going to ever be that again. Just oh let go God. of that pressure. I want to talk about that just for a minute because I have so much bubbling up in me right now. Yeah. Okay, so Thanksgiving, um, I cooked for 40 people and people are like, how in the world did you do that? I took a week. I made the gravy and I froze it. Um, I made the things that would sit good for two days beforehand. And I got to Thanksgiving day and I woke up and I was like, inhale, exhale, peace. Of course, that lasted for all of, you know, 38 minutes. And then I went into panic because I realized something. And that is that I'm now the matriarch. Mm -hmm. And I think the pressure of that alone was like, oh my gosh, my mom isn't here this year. And I made her favorite foods and I did it really well, but I, I want to know more about like what you just said, because it's, it's almost impossible for me. Yeah. And, and we all do it differently. Some of us think we're going to try to recreate the holidays and make it work just like it always did. We find out it can't, you know, so it's like, it brings us to the third tip, let the day be the day. Oh my let God, you're, day, you're just, oh. Let the day be the day. <laughs> we all go, I'm going to try to make it a happy day or I'm going to let it be a sad day. None of us can predict yes. what the holidays are going to be like, let the day be the day. I'll be honest with you, for about the majority of it, I was numb. I yeah. think I numbed out at about sundown. And then when everybody started to get here, I felt relief because one thing I, I want to say that I did that I'm really proud of is I handpicked each person that came. There were no, um, well, that's not true. There were two people that were here that it was awkward because um, my mom's husband brought a friend and it was like, hi, nice to meet you. How do I do this? And it was awkward because I I want to hug everybody and be, you know, I'm Miss America at, at the house here. Right. But I felt this pressure again to sort of be all things to all people. And I got really twisted for a minute and I went in the bathroom and I sat down on the commode and I said, okay, you're going to have to stop this because this is your holiday as well. I think, I, I think we forget that it's our experience as well as being the hostess with the mostess. And I want to bang everybody on the head and make their dreams come true for the night. And I had to, I had to, I will say that for me, I had to go into another room and take a deep breath and take a pause, if you will, take a timeout. I'm going to call it a timeout. Yeah. To just speak to myself right. and say, you have got to stop this because this is where you're going to get in trouble because of my own recovery and healing. Right. And there's always going to be something that is going to rattle us. There's always going to be something. Nothing no shit, is. Sherlock. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing I tell people about let the day be the day is that doesn't mean you don't get to say their name. Okay. People in grief, we want to say our loved one's name. The other thing is sometimes other people have reactions when we talk about our sadness, our grief. They our do grief. not know what to say. They do not know what to say. That has been my experience. People do not know what to say. And by the way, on grief.com, my site, one of the things I, I hear about the statistics, because it has millions of visits, there is a page on the best and worst things to say to people in grief. It gets visited the most at 3 a.m. If you tell me she's in a better place, I'm going to have feelings yeah. about that. Right. Because we want them with us. Yeah. We want them with us, you know? It's true. And However, I think selfishly, we don't want to hear that because we want what we want. Right. And it's also the context I found. If you're having a visit with your minister and your minister says it, it does feel a little different than if just a random person says it to you out of the blue. The yeah. other thing about that is when people have those reactions, they don't want to hear about your grief or they think you should be over it. I remind people what other people think about your grief is none of your business. Oh, it's wow. none of your business. None of your business. Right. The next tip. This is an interesting one. If the holiday is too hard, you have permission to cancel it. 
The holidays, if you cancel them, they will come around next year, no problem. Give yourself permission. I think, and I will say this because I'm transparent um, and because I trust you, I guess I kind of forget that we're on this <laughs> podcast. And um, I did Thanksgiving on an alternative day. And Thanksgiving day sucked. And I cried and I cried and I gave myself permission to do that just to take, because everybody was like, I hope your Thanksgiving was a blessed one. And I went. So for me, I did Thanksgiving on an alternative day. And that felt good to me because it allowed me to look at it more as a day instead of, oh my gosh, this is a national holiday and I have to be absolutely ready to go on stage, you know, lips lined, hair right, brushed. Right. And the whole thing. So I found myself Thanksgiving Day just letting it fly. And it was painful of absolute. And I even looked at pictures and found myself opening the scrapbook and just, how could you do this? You know, I can't believe you're not here. Where are you? Right. And I went, I went there. And that's why I call you because I, I'm like, David, you're going to have to help me through this. I can't do this by myself. This is too much. So, yeah, I, that's a tip for anyone who says I can't do it on that day, but maybe there's another day to do it on. And so that that's and what if I not, there's next year. There's next year. It'll come. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one for me because my mom was so right. hell bent on us wearing sweaters and matching uh, everything we all got our own salt and pepper shakers. So I, um, my daughter in love went out and bought shakers for each person at the table. So I think she bought 20 and, uh, we sort of did the whole Naomi Judd. This is what she does. And yet the rest of it was my doing, but we also wanted to remain traditional enough to say we're passing it forward. Right. And just like you, you can do it on a different day, if people get so much comfort out of the rituals, by all means, do them, do them. I do, and, I do normally, so that was weird. It's okay to skip it a year if you need to. The other one is we all get invited to events, Christmas events, holiday events. So a couple of things I tell people, obviously you get to go if you want, if it brings you comfort, I remind people you can have an exit strategy. My strategy is I always walk in and I go, this is just a drop by. I'm just dropping by. Dropping by, okay. Just dropping by. And if you stay longer, everyone's thrilled, but you don't need to commit to being there the whole evening if it gets too hard. So I have, um, I need some advice about this. I just got a, a an invitation to uh, my mom's, uh, husband is having a Christmas party and I'm invited and I, I just don't know that I can do it. What would you say? I would say, I think you could say, don't know if I'll be able to come. I'm going to leave it at that for now. And mm -hmm. if I come, I come. And if I don't, I don't. And you know, I, I feel weird about it because I don't want him to think I don't support him, but it's just too painful. So and I don't say, to me, it feels selfish. It feels really selfish. And you mm -hmm. might say, I support you and I'm working on seeing if I can make it. I'm working on it. I'm okay. working on it. Just, you know, I think there's something about honesty and you're, you're such an honest person. I think to just share that, you know, I'm working on this. I'm trying, but it's easier to do it with my fans than it is my family. For, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's how it is. And for other people, it's sometimes easier to do it with strangers than family. It's yes, sort of agreed. the same thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think you also, here's the other thing. I remind people when you get invitations, no thank you is a complete sentence. <laughs> no thank you is a complete sentence. Even no is a complete sentence. No, thank you. Okay, you're you're kind of blowing my mind a little bit because that's almost such a sin. Yeah. I do not do well with saying no. I and try you so were hard raised to compromise. To be people pleasers. Com well, pro compromise was right. absolutely right. because we disagreed on just about everything. 
and still do. And yet communication, compromise, and compassion are the three C's for me personally. So the compassion piece is he's having a Christmas party without mom. The communication piece is WTF. What do we do? I have no idea. And then the compromise, what is the compromise? So that's just how I work normally. I so see. no is a complete sentence. I'm going to have to add that. Hmm. Hey, keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. The next tip is grief doesn't need a lot of time, but it needs dedicated time. Whoa. Okay. So I had Thanksgiving things to do and to go to. Okay. I started my day going to the cemetery to see my son's grave. It didn't wow. need a lot of time, but I needed dedicated time. Whether that's a walk, a shower. You know, so many times we want to go to the holiday event and deal with our grief there. Your grief is precious. Give it some time before the holiday events. Start your day with giving it time. Whether that's a walk, a shower, lighting a candle, whatever it may be for them. For me, that's almost impossible <laughs> because I just, I get stuck and, um, and I'm working on this. This is one of my top three things for 2023. I will um, not react by drinking or eating something unhealthy because I am such a foodie that I tend to, like when you were talking, the whole thing I thought of was, and eat a pie. You know, because I'm a jokester in my family, how I survived is I make jokes because mom and Ashley were so uh, brilliant with words and smart and intellect and all those words. And I, I was just sitting there going, beep, 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 say something funny, beep, 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 you know, and I was just almost trained to do that because of my inability to be appropriate in settings like Thanksgiving dinner. I want to say what everybody's thinking. And my first thing is take a walk. Right. No, I'm not going to take a walk, but you know what? I think that's really healthy. And I need to look at that because that's an option. It is an option. It is an option. It's a good option. The next one I want to mention is dealing with decorations. That's another place we <laughs> people have so much pressure about. I got to do the decorations. And if they bring you joy, at they every table, at every, every setting. Table. This has to be at every setting or else. If it brings you joy, great. If it's a hideous obligation, give uh. yourself permission to let go of some of the decorations. The Christmas I just got anxious. I got really anxious when you're talking. I just, how in the world do, do we do this? I guess we just have to practice. Ugh. And we have to let others do it. Like, I'll give you a story from my world. The first year after my son died, my younger son, my older son was with me. I put up the tree. I started putting lights on. And I said to him, are you going to come and help? And he goes, I can't. Mm -hmm. Now, he's 22 at the time. He said, I can't. And then I do an old trick I used to do when he was young. I'd sort of bumble it. So he'd want to come help me because dad can't do it. And he didn't come to help that time. And I had to let him be where he is. And I said to him, you know, I get you can't do decorations this Christmas. I hope we'll have some other Christmases that we can. Wow. Well. You just got to let it be because sometimes we can do it and our loved ones maybe can't do it. And right. everyone does grief differently. Even in a family, everyone in your family does grief differently. I had um, people bring a dish to this Thanksgiving and it was almost impossible for me to accept. <laughs> it was just like, what do you mean you're bringing a pie? I make that pie, you know, and I had to let go of my perfectionism of making every single thing from scratch, which I, which actually I did. But what I'm saying is I had everybody bring desserts and that was hard for me, but I did it because I thought 
maybe it'll help people feel included. And cause we use, we call it supper on the ground, you know, where everybody brings a dish. Right. I'm not really good at that. Cause I'm a chef. As you can see, the kitchen is set up to make everything, you right. know, and I had to let go of that perfectionism. And it was, so I have a couple of points that I'm really proud of that I say, okay, I let people bring stuff. I let people do things that I let go of. Like I had a bartender, I had a son in love come and he did the bartending because I'm usually the hostess with the mostess. And so what you're saying is decorations, that is really almost sacrilegious. It just feels really wrong to not do right. them. Because I have the good news is I have a Christmas tree up all year long. So that's a good one. That's easy for me. But you're saying that it's okay for people not to participate. It's okay if they can't. If they Ooh, can't. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm going to just give you one more that's going to be hard for you. And I never heard of this. And someone said to me a couple of years ago, they said, this year we did a bank tree. I said, what's a bank tree? And they said, our Christmas tree is so hard to put up because every ornament was heartbreaking to us. Um, and we did not want a tree. So they said, you know how you go in the hotel lobby or the bank and they have a bank tree that's just a pretty tree with a bunch of ornaments from Target? <laughs> they said, we just got a tree and we put up new ornaments from Target. And it's like the hotel lobby tree. It didn't break <laughs> our heart to put it up. I thought that was a really innovative thing to do. That's interesting. I don't know if I could do that. I get it. I get it. I don't know. That's that's why we've got so many options for people. Here's you're really cute. Thing. You're really cute. I don't know about that. Here's and I hear one. you. I hear you. I'm just right. kind of going, yeah, right. <laughs> Here's the next one. It's called a direct ask. How many of us know special dates that it's our loved one died? It's uh, the 6th, the 7th, the 8th anniversary, the 10th year. It's the birthday. It's our anniversary, whatever it may be. And we hope people call us, come over, show up, and they don't meet our expectations. So I tell people in grief, I'm so sorry you have to do this, but do a direct ask. Say to people, the holiday season is going to be hard for me. Let's go to coffee a couple of times. Let's get dinner. Ask for what you need. Do a direct ask. Are you good at that or not good at that? Um, it depends on the person. Um, I'm going to do it with my sister because we are working really hard at being direct. Um, she asked me to Thanksgiving in another state. And I said, I just can't travel. I can't imagine traveling. And it absolutely made me so sad. I cried like crazy because I thought, oh my God, again, that's so selfish. And that's what I do for a living. And just, it was to Maine. I mean, there were like a list of things and she directly asked me and I said, I just can't imagine being in a airport and traveling in a car and traveling to and from on the busiest days and blah, 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 blah is coming to mind. And I had to live with that for a minute. And yet we did it. We got through it. Right. And she's coming here and she's asked me, and I ask her, so it depends on the person. There are some people I don't feel safe. And are safe. you good at doing a direct ask of others? No. Here's what I need. No. Because well, I have everything. David, David, I have everything. And my mother, God love her, she said, your worst day is people's best day. And I, I just have never forgotten those words. And I think I've got everything. You know, how dare you? And that's just the truth because, you, and I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. And we're you. not talking about material things. We're no, talking, not but material. you know, I got to tell you, I know when it comes to like, just I'm having a sad moment. I need to talk. You actually can do that. You actually can say, Ooh, I'm needing a little help today. I have a sickness and that is, Every time I think of, you know, I need a hug. I think of a, it's a Saturday Night Live skit. I go in, <laughs> I go into, you know, and darn it, people like me. Yeah, darn it, people like you. You're <laughs> okay and people like you. All right. The next tip, that one didn't go over well, everyone. The next tip is some of us are going to end up alone. Some <sighs> of us are going to be alone on the holidays. 
That's just I'm going to tell you I'm what, at. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you what, that's where I go. Okay. It was really great talking to you. Okay. Bye. It kills me. Absolutely kills me. And I'm already thinking of next year, what I can do differently to help people who are alone. It just breaks the loneliness piece. Oh, wow, 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 wow. So first of all, I'll be the other person in this. You know, I've spent all the holidays in my life. I've done a Christmas. I've done a Thanksgiving. You survive it. You survive it. Yeah. And sometimes there's journeys we do have to go on alone. Maybe you're in a place where for people who have a different personality than you, that might feel right. It might feel right. It can happen. And the reality is to just know, and I'll tell you, I have a friend, I'm really amazed at what he did. He decided on one of the holidays, he was just going to go to his favorite restaurant and he was alone. And everyone said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm going to my favorite restaurant. And they said, who are you going with? He said, I'm going alone. One person after another said, can I come with you? It ended up being 15 people with him. So I thought that was so interesting for someone who was doing it alone. He ended up being with 15 people. But if you're going to be alone, it's okay to admit it. You know, you can also go to your place of worship that day. You also can make it a day of service. Maybe it's a day you feed the homeless. I got so much out of doing that on Thanksgiving. And, you know, in reach out to your grief group if you're dealing with the pain of the holidays. I have online groups. We actually meet on Christmas, on Christmas Eve. We make sure we did that. We do it on Thanksgiving. Maybe you talk to your neighbors. Maybe you accept that work invitation. You know, to have no shame if it turns out you're going to be alone and be open to whatever may come your way. Okay, stop for just a second. Um, I can feel my tears coming. I uh, I hear all of that, and I was stuck on Thanksgiving. And I think it's because of the shame and the guilt around suicide that I was stuck. I mean, to to get up and go to a place of worship is just like beyond my comprehension. Uh, reaching out to a neighbor or even a friend, a family friend, just I felt so surrounded by sadness and I was just stranded on an island by myself and I just thought I was going to go crazy. And I didn't do anything about it other than just sit there and go, let let it ebb and flow. I know enough to say that, but I just... Suicide is such a crazy trip to have to take that I just was all, almost, I was unable. I was absolutely stuck. And I've said it to you before, and I'm going to say it again. Your mother died of an illness. There is no shame. It happens to all families whether they admit it or not. Every family is dealing with mental health issues on some level. They might not be open to talk about it. They might not be open to admit it. Nobody wants to admit it, David. You we know all that. have a family member that we know has suffered a bit with how they see the world, how they perceive the world. Right. And let me just tell you, you being here today talking about this, in this guest series is really for all the holidays is really going to help end the stigma. The more we talk about it, the more we admit it. What do you do when you're stuck? I mean, like that, because the whole day I was by myself a lot. Uh, my husband just was so dear and would come in and check on me and say things like, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? And I kept saying no and no and no. And I'm thinking, why? Why am I so stranded? Because that's grief. And it's okay to have a dark day of the soul, a dark night of your soul. That is what grief feels like. It is. You are going to have those days. You are going to have those nights. And we all are. We all are. 
That's why we need to just be there with one another, talk to one another, be available to one another. Right. It's so hard. It's so hard. You know, I wish I could take people's pain away. I wish people could take my pain away. But here's the thing. The pain is part of the love. What? The pain is part of the love. <sighs> if you loved intensely the person who died, you are going to miss them intensely. It's hard. It's hard. I just can't believe it. I think you're in shock for an eternity. A long time. A the whole thing time. of, you know, it'll it'll get better with time. No, 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 no. It will change with time. No, here's, here's the thing. No feeling is final. No feeling is final. When we're in pain, we think this pain is what we're going to have for the rest of our life. No feeling is final. It will change. It will change in time. Mm. But we got to go through those dark nights. We do. No way around them. No skipping the pain. No, duh. I mean, it's it's really the most incredibly intense helplessness I've ever experienced. And I have children, and I think, you know, my son is a canine officer, and every time he leaves the house, I think, God, I'm so grateful for Kevlar. And, uh, you know, my daughter, she's got a daughter, and it's just all of a sudden hitting me that there's this fourth Judd and just all of the worry and the concern and the right. this losing my mom is like no other. Right. It just it's it's beyond anything I've ever experienced. So, yeah, good luck on the holidays. I just can't believe it. I cannot believe that she's not here. And it's just constant. And I did the best I could. I thought Thanksgiving was brilliant. Um, I had Lindsay and Tara helping me. And they went to the home store and bought pillows and for the chairs. And it was a glorious team effort. Thank God for people. That's probably, if I could say one thing, that I'm grateful for, it would be for the help of others who know that you're going through the hell, like you said, dark night of the soul. Um, they were there and I was just in my gratitude. I was like, I'm so grateful that I'm not by myself on this particular day. So to be alone on that Thanksgiving day was brutal. Yeah. I think there was something really smart about how you did that by doing Thanksgiving a couple of days early and then actually being on your own that day that I guess a journey you had to take. Yeah, everybody's got a different story. And I think uh, mine is I gave myself permission to enjoy the process, which is, by the way, everybody I talked to and I felt sad for them because it was all this pressure to get everything like a short order cook, you know, to get uh, everything together at the same time. And I thought, I went to the Barefoot Contessa and she said, here's how to have a stress-free holiday. Yeah. <laughs> and so I made everything as much right. as I could, you know, prior to. But I thank, thank you for saying that because Thanksgiving was so brutal the day of that I, I kind of knew it was going to be. And so I was almost like preparing myself for that. And I woke up that morning going, man, I'm so glad I don't have to put on clothes and I can wear my pajamas and my slippers and I can go H-Y-G-G-E is the hig, which is this wrap yourself in a warm blanket, give yourself some tea and a fire and just lay there and soak in the comfort of being surrounded by a, a blanket of love. And I was absolutely there the entire day. Right. I don't know that I got out of bed, but a couple of times just to have a snack. But otherwise, I was down for the count. And that's what well, no, I know people will feeling. be surprised to hear people will be surprised to hear that because I think so many of us feel like, oh, just march through the storm, you know, and keep on trucking. Cause I tell everybody that all the time, but and there does come a time when you say, okay, I'm out. I, I can't do this anymore. You know, it's interesting okay. in the last book I wrote finding meaning uh, and you've talked about finding meaning in the sixth stage and your whole tour has been that, which has just been amazing to watch. I'll tell you something I studied that I never thought I would knew it, study in my life is buffaloes. Here's the thing. Buffaloes, when they sense a storm coming, 
they run into the storm, thereby minimizing the time they're in pain. They are in pain less because they go into the storm. So many of us with grief, we keep grief 10 feet behind us our whole life, and it makes our life miserable. In many ways, we're being buffaloes by talking about this pain and making it okay to admit it, to feel it, to share it. The last thing I, I want to mention- for my animals. Yeah. I learned from my, I, yeah. I had- I have buffalo and I have these animals and I will literally look out. I have these miniature donkeys and you're right when it's raining like crazy and it's been raining a lot. They, they literally look at it. Like they don't say bring it on, but they're right. looking at it like, okay, here we go. Right. And that's so great that you said that because I learned so much from my animals that they have this attitude like shit happens. Yeah. It's okay. We're here. And we're going to, we're going to stand here in the storm. And um, I don't know that I, I really got that. And and yeah. yet my animals teach me all the time. They're amazing so teachers. They are. And that's interesting. You said that that's very helpful to me because I think you're right. Sometimes we don't, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm right. fine. I'm going to put it behind me, put it, I'm suck fine. it up. You know, I, I made a joke about, you know, it's okay to stuff the turkey, although people are saying don't stuff the turkey anymore. But I say you can stuff the turkey, don't stuff your feelings. But anyway, um, the last tip I want to mention for people is to include our loved ones in the holiday. You know, we have continued connection with, with them. We're still connected with them. Light a candle for them. You know, cook their favorite recipe, their favorite dish. You know, just allow them to have everyone at the table, maybe share a story, a favorite story. Just hmm. include them in the holiday because they're there in our heart anyway. Wow. So one of the sweetest things that happened to me, and she's sitting right here, Lindsay, my right hand, made me my childhood uh, jello, cherry jello with bananas and grapes and walnuts salad that my mom always made right. me. And I opened the refrigerator and it had a heart on the post-it note, of course, because she's a student and always trying so hard. And I stood there and I looked at it like, and it's so funny because my I did a, a book as well about food is love for my grandmother. One of the chapters was food is love. And meaning that when I, I was sick, you know, I got my special tomato soup, right. chicken noodle, Campbell's and crackers with butter on them. And that's just a whole thing. That's like, you know, when you're sick. So you're right. I think it's interesting. This whole thing is so interesting. And I keep looking at things going, I had no idea. And I'm pretty smart because I've studied since 2003 in recovery, you know, the whole 12 steps and the blah, blah, blah. And you're just so smart, 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 smart. Who gives a rat's butt when you're feeling the grief? That's why I call you because I feel so clueless just somebody help me here and relying on the kindness of others is not one of my things i'm good at but you're right including a story i didn't even think about that to stand up and say anything about mom because i think i just wanted to just let things happen as they do i haven't done anything maybe i'll do something for christmas about mom because well, there again, I talk about her every night on stage for God's every sake. Night, every night, every night. So there's that. Every night. Every night. So maybe Thank that's, you. I'll give myself a break there yeah. because I yeah. do talk about her so much. I think sometimes too much yet she's gone. And so there's that, there's that really big part of you that people you're worried that they're going to forget. Yes. And our loved ones are unforgettable. Unforgettable. Now here's what's hard. You and I don't have this problem. But there's a lot of people who do sit at their tables and do begin to talk about their loved one. And someone goes, don't bring us down. That's depressing. It's time for you to move on. It's time for you to get over them. And I'll tell you, there you go. And I'll tell you, I am so impressed with people who go, listen, I'm going to talk about them, whether you like it or not. I'm going to reminisce about them. I'm going to talk about them anytime I want. I wonder why we're that way. Why are we that way? Because your son 
when he died? How old? 21. He was 21. Okay. 21. That is impossible for me to comprehend. Yeah. That's just one of those things where I click off. Impossible and... for me to comprehend, even as a grief expert, even as a grief expert, <sighs> impossible for me to comprehend. And still brutal. And I also tell people I still am able to find joy and happiness and live a life that honors him. And here's, this really is kind of, I think, one of the, as we begin to wrap up here to really talk about this, to also realize what death can't take away. Death can't Whoa. take away. Yeah, what death can't take away. It can't take away our memories. It can't, don't, and I always say to people, don't give death any more power than it already has. Death does have the power to physically take our loved ones. It does not have the power to end a relationship. It does not have the power to end our love. It does not have the power to take our hope away. I tell you what, your mother, you never, never. I, I don't think it ends. It ever ends ever, 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 ever. And I get so frustrated sometimes because I think, Holy moly, this is an ongoing love affair that will never end. And it's so never cool. end, never end. It will never end. And for anyone out there who maybe you're feeling hopeless, to just know that loss of hope that we feel in grief is temporary. Your loved one's death, oh my gosh, it's permanent. It's heartbreaking for me to say that. But your loss of hope is temporary. And until people can find hope, we'll hold hope for them. And if anyone's struggling, please reach out always. 988, call someone, get help. You're worth it. And for those that are struggling this season, it's hard. And we're with them. And I'll tell you one of the big lessons in all of this for me is grief is ultimately love. Grief is our love. <sighs> Grief is our love. You're good. <laughs> you're so good. You're just so present and you're just so good at teaching and you've taught me so much and um, I have so much to learn and yet I don't want to have to do this. And uh, it's my path. And yes. if I can help one person, it's like if I could do a plead, um, I like what you said about reach out. It's hard for me to reach out because I'm supposed to be the boss lady. And I've got answers that some people don't because success gives you this false sense of security sometimes is just to tell people, please, please, I'm begging you. Um, because this is what I'm learning is sometimes the most strong, smart, capable thing I ever do is to say, um, I need help because Winona Judd needs help. You know what? She has everything and she's successful and she's this and 21. Blah, 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 blah. There are times when I'll say to Lindsay or my husband, you know what? I'm not okay. And they kind of look at me at first, like helpless, of course, because it's not something you're used to hearing from someone that close to you. You're used to hearing it from other people, maybe, is just to reach out to somebody and yeah. whoever that is. And I have very few people I'm that safe with to say I'm not okay. And sometimes when I do that, I feel better. <laughs> it's like this lifted weight of feeling like, oh, I don't have to keep the secret because secrets keep me sick. Correct. I've, I have learned that. That's one of the things I've learned is secrets keep you sick. And I'll look at Lindsay like on stage, getting ready to go on stage. And I say, I think I'm going to faint. And she'll look at me like, no, you're not, you know, and then she knows when to push the button and send me. And yet there are times when I really do need someone to hear me. And so what do we do about if we don't know who to reach out to? That's one of the things that's been hard for me is to know who to reach out to. And there's more people out there for us to reach out to than we think. Okay. Here's, here's one of the terrible things. 
in my line of profession, I've been to more funerals than I anyone would ever want to. And one of the things I hear at funerals, when people hear the person was lonely, the person was sad, they're like, why didn't they reach out to me? There's people out there who would love, it might be your neighbor, it might be your clergy, it might be a coworker at the office, it might be a stranger, it might be a helpline. It's so important we do reach out. And if you don't get the help you need the first time, you've got to reach out again because help is out there. Personal, professional, you know, I have amazing grief groups online. If people back in the days, we maybe there wasn't a grief group near us. I've got grief groups listed, so many things like that, that people can find resources. Okay. It's really important. You don't have to walk this road alone. There's some days, like you said, we may choose to be alone, but you don't have to walk through this whole experience. And I got to tell you, you are changing the world. I've told you this privately. When you get up, whether it's at your concert or TV, and you talk about grief, you're giving people permission to talk about this. You are ending the stigma on suicide. You're changing the world. It's really important what you're doing just by sharing who you are and what you're going through. Well, it's funny you say that because I don't feel that way. <laughs> and, and that's why I'm here to remind you that. I hear you. And um, real quick thing, and, and I'm going to tell you that I'm not just telling people what to do based on, you know, I have all the answers, but even during the pandemic, um, I called 40 fans on a weekend because I was having such a hard time because the music business was shut down as everything else was. And I was despondent. I mean, I am watching my band members live on, you know, unemployment and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I called fans and I just reached out. So I guess what I'm saying is I did it myself. I'm, I'm the student and I'm teaching what I'm learning, but I called them and said, okay, let's talk. And it was one of the most painful exhilarating things I have ever done in my life. That fellowship, I promise you those 40 fans and I are absolutely intertwined in a way that's not about, you know, statistics. Something happened. And isn't that interesting? Yep. Because I just thought of that. I thought, man, I'm reaching out to 40 fans and I'm telling them, what am I going to do? And they're like, I don't know. What am I going to do? And we're just fellowshipping. So I hear you saying that there's a phone number to call, even if it's 911, right. they will do a welfare check. And right. they 911 988 get help. And here's the other thing that people don't realize grief and trauma gets healed in connection with other people. We I don't agree. heal grief Amen. and trauma in isolation, we need other people for our healing. We're not meant to be islands of grief. So connect with others, join. I've got Facebook groups. I've got tons of things for people. And there's a bunch of people like me that have resources. So Google things, look things up, grief.com, whatever it may be, get resources. You are not alone this season or any season. Thank one you last so thing much. I want to say. Yes. I, want to, I have one more thing to say yeah. that I think is really important. I have this burning desire to say it before I take off. I am in a group where I am loved and known for my weakness, not mm -hmm. my strength. Mm -hmm. That is life-changing mm -hmm. because I'm telling you in my weakness, I am strong because the more weak I am, the more that these people are bonded and the more that we connect. And I've never been in a group before where I feel that way because everything else is about success and award-winning everything. Find a group where you are loved and known for your weakness, not your strength. And I'm like, okay, I'm out because that is like drop the mic. And if you cannot find it, it means you're supposed to create one. Ooh. You, can, you can be the creator. You can say, let's get a group together 
take off the facade of we're all fine and let's just be real. You are one of the realest people I know. Thank you so much for doing this today. What a gift <sighs> you are to the world. I so I'm, appreciate you. I'm getting it to give, to get, to give, to get, to give. Thank you. Thank you so much for being just the amazing person you are. I so love you and appreciate you. And everyone watching, we love and appreciate you. Thank you so much. And we're sending you so much love this holiday in your grief. Just know you are loved and cared for. Thanks, everyone. Amen. Take care. Thank you.